Today we are interviewing Tom Myslinski Jr., a 1986 graduate of RFA, a four-year starter at Tennessee, and he played nine seasons in, in the NFL. Today we sat down with him to ask him about growing up in Rome, playing college football, and professional football, and life after football as a strength and conditioning coach. Nice to meet you, Mr. Myslinski. My name is Cody Smith, and I'm a junior here at RFA. I'll start out by asking, you know, what was it like growing up in Rome, playing youth football, you know, through high school? What was it like just in Rome in general? Well, I, I'll tell you what, Cody. So to me, when I think about growing up in Rome, I think about three things, and that's kind of faith, family, and football. And, and in that order, I mean, as a young kid, I always remember, you know, we were a very uh, religious family. And I, I don't know if you know, but my dad was one of the coaches at RFA for a long time. And so I always remember going to going to church every Sunday, whether that's at Transfiguration Church or St. Paul's, and then going to church school on Wednesday or Thursday, then being an altar boy at St. Paul's school. And then it's Lent season. So who can forget going to the Rome Polish home and having fish fries on Friday night too. So, you know, that was, that was a really, really important, especially my grandmother was a cook there. So all that was really important to us. And then family, you know, we had our, our, you know, my, my, on my dad's side, my grandma and grandpa, you know, lived in uh, South Rome. And then my grandmother lived with us. And then my aunt and uncle, uh, Ray Tarkowski, is the voice of the Orange for RFA football. And uh, then also, you know, and so then I had a lot of cousins in town, too. So it was, it was you know, all the holidays, you know, were, were very, were very rich with faith and, and family. And then how can you not go to holiday and not talk about RFA football? So I, I actually did a little fact checking on RFA football today. This football program in New York State history with 646 wins. They've had 21 undefeated seasons. So, you know, you know, Rome is Rome is just, you know, really rich with football history. And, you know, no matter the time of the year, everybody always talked about, you know, Rome football. How was RFA going to be the next year? And, hey, are we going to go to Syracuse and beat the heck out of those Syracuse teams like we used to? So it was, a, you know, those, that, those are the things I really remember growing up in Rome. Um, what was your favorite memory? Do you have a favorite memory from growing up in Rome? You know what? I really had a lot. I mean, kind of as a kid, I had I had a bike. And so with a bike, I had free reign. Like you guys all have cars. I had bike. And I swear to this day, that's the reason why I was so strong was because I rode my bike everywhere around Rome. So I remember like in the summer that I would wake up in the morning, I would go, I would go to RFA and at RFA, there would be Coach Evans and Coach Manfred and I would have basketball. Then from basketball, I would leave to go to Franklin Field and I would have baseball with Coach DeCosti. And uh, it coached the costly. And, and then and, and then from there, I would go probably to swim lessons at the, and lift eights at RFA. And so my whole day was jam packed. There was, never was a dull moment. Then I went home and ate dinner. And then I was done. Then I went and played with my buddies at night. So, you know, I, I went to Fort Stanwix. And so all my buddies lived behind Fort Stanwix. And we played chase to the you know wee hours of the night. So, I mean, it was never a dull moment at living in Rome and growing up as a kid. So I, I have a ton of fond memories. Who were your role models growing up? I mean, I know your dad was an RFA football coach. I mean, anybody else? Yeah, you know, probably my biggest role model was my dad. But other than that, it was, it was all the athletes that played at RFA. I mean, I mean, when I say that RFA was my playground, and this is old RFA, because literally, I don't know if you know where my, my parents live, like right across from the baseball field. So I grew up at RFA. Like I knew every nook and cranny that there is to know in RFA. Like with Mo working uh, over in the stadium to Coach Nimai going down in the basement at RFA to, you know, just, to, you know, all the hallways, you know, all, all the gyms. I mean, that was my playground as a kid. So really, you know, my heroes were always, you know, the players that played at RFA and, and, and really... You know, I, I, I take a lot of pride in tradition and a lot of those guys mentored me, you know, the coaches and, and the players, you know, mentored me along, you know, as I, as I grew up. Um, what did RFA football mean to you, especially having your father as a coach? I mean, I'm sure it was a huge part in growing up in Rome, but. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was life, like I said earlier on. I mean, it, it was really all about football. I mean, even when like, you know. In the off season, when we were in, maybe I was in indoor track. We were in indoor track to get better to play football, in order to get better to play football. I mean, really, everything was about you know playing football at RFA and a lot of pride in that. And it was just a way. That was a way of uh, that was a way of our life. You know, we we really enjoyed it. We loved it, and you know, we used to have a a really great uh, summer program uh, at RFA. And I remember when I was at the University of Tennessee. I came back and I used to come back and train every summer because there wasn't a summer program 
that prepared me to play football better than our phase football program. So, you know, to me, uh, it's very sentimental and it's, you know, to me, I have a lot of, a, a, a lot of rich history growing up over there at RFA. Um, what other sports did you play in high school and how successful were you in those other sports? Yeah. So, you know what, I, I kind of played everything growing up as a kid, but really I, I, I focused on indoor track and outdoor track. I wrestled a little bit. I was, you know, an average wrestler. Um, and I, I was successful. I was a, a two-time New York state uh, discus champion uh, in 86 and 87. Uh, I was, you know, in the shop. Um, and, and then obviously in football, you know, we, we had great football teams and I think 84 and 85, we were section three champs. And, you know, I kind of made a reference earlier to Rome, Rome to the dome. I mean, that was a, that was a big deal for us, you know? And so, um, you know, you know, we really, in some of the best trips that we had, you know, we're traveling out to Syracuse, playing these teams, winning, and then coming home on a bus, you know, with your buddies and just having that, having that camaraderie on the way home and, you know, really developing those friendships with your buddies. So we really, you know, had an awesome time. You know, no matter what sport we were in, we always had an awesome time. Um, I'm sure you had a lot of colleges that were interested in you, but, you know, why did you end up choosing Tennessee? Was, you know, any specific reason? Well, I'll give you a big reason is so the day after my first game in my my senior year in high school, we played Faithful Manlius. And then the following day, I actually got in a car accident. So I wasn't I wasn't able to play in another game. So I actually, you know, fractured my leg and had a bunch of stitches. in my. Uh, so the reason why I went to Tennessee ultimately is because they were one of the teams that stuck with me. And they also I, the reason why I went there is uh, they offered me a dual scholarship. And so that means that I could compete in track and field and football. And at that time, Tennessee was one of the premier teams for dual sport athletes. I mean, they had, uh, you know, they had Willie Galt and Sam Grady and, and uh, all these great football players that also did track and field in the off season. And so really that was, uh, that was, you know, really, really popular at that time with Johnny Majors at Tennessee. So that's really ultimately what attracted me to go to the University of Tennessee. What was your experience like at Tennessee? I mean, you know, it, it was great. I mean, we won two SEC championships in football. We won indoor, two outdoor SEC championships in track and field. We won a national championship in 1991 in track and field. So I had an awesome experience, you know, and, and going to the University of Tennessee, I always I always wanted to be a strength coach, you know, just growing up in the weight room and, you know, working, you know, working with the guys all the time and just from just spotting them from picking up and cleaning up. And you just I mean, and that's what we talked about at home. You know, we always talked about, you know, being strong and being an offensive lineman. And so that kind of fit in. I knew how important it was as an offensive lineman to be strong and physical. So that just kind of played in with my career path. So I knew going to Tennessee, I wanted to be a strength coach. So, you know, I also got my degree in kinesiology there. Uh, and, you know, it was perfect. So it was actually the best of both worlds. So you, you had a successful career at Tennessee. Um, you ended up getting drafted in the fourth round. What was that experience like, just knowing that your dream had come true, you know, you're finally in the NFL? Well, even more than that, the, like, I, I was a, I was probably a pro football fanatic more than a college football uh, fanatic. Um, you know, so growing up as a kid, I had, I had kind of one by the Cowboys. It was really a dream come true. Uh, so it was, it was, a, you know, it was, um, it was awesome. It was surreal. And, you know, it was, uh, you know, it's something you'll never forget. Um, and it was great. And even going there, I had, you know, one of my heroes that played pro football was Roger Stallback, and he was the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys at that time, number 12, and he's in the Hall of Fame. And, you know, meeting him was really kind of like, you know, that was kind of just awesome. And, you, you know, really having those experiences and actually along the way and playing for other teams and meeting heroes or guys that you looked up to, um, you know, meeting them around the facility was just Throughout your career, you played for multiple teams, but in Jacksonville, you found a role that you were, I'd say, the most successful in early in your career. Um, that carried over to your time in Pittsburgh. How did you find success and keep keep focused on the goal of getting substantial minutes in the NFL? You, you know, Cody, I, I, I think how I found success was just getting back to my uh, to my roots of hard work uh, that I learned at Rome Free Academy and you know, and really just being patient and just being the best that I could be. And, and then once you start playing, you, you, you learn how to make you, um, you know, you have to rise to the occasion. And, um, you know, you, as you play, you get better 
playing the game of football and understand when you play the game of football, there's, there's uh, so much that you cannot be taught about the game. And some of the greatest coaches I've had were the players that I played next to. And so really it was that experience of playing next to those, you know, great players. So there's, for example, when I played in Pittsburgh, I played, you know, next to two hall of famers, meaning Alan Fanica, who just got elected in the hall of fame and Dermani Dawson. And, you know, playing with those guys were, you know, was phenomenal. Uh, there was another player there named Tunch Ilkin, who I didn't play with, but, Tunch was the greatest coach that I never played for and taught me the most about, you know, the game. And so really was learning from the game, you know, from the players that they really taught you how to play. So after, after you retired, you became a strength and conditioning coach. I mean, you mentioned earlier, that's, you knew that that's what you wanted to do when you were done, you know, immediately when you were graduating high school, you went to college for that. And what was it like being able to find that role in the NFL in such a big organization, you know, after? Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Guys go well. I better have a second career plan. So I went to when I was playing for the Steelers. I started my master's in exercise physiology at the University of Pittsburgh. And so when I was when I was done, I really just had to take a couple more courses to finish up. And so it was a it was kind of a seamless transition. I went from playing in the NFL to now, you know, being an assistant in the NFL. And then for and then I went back to college for a little bit, became my head guy. Then I had to earn my way. And so you know, really all in all, I've been about you know, I don't know, 24, 25 years as a coach and a player in the NFL. And it's, it's just been an, an awesome, rewarding experience. And I, I've loved it, you know, every step of the way. Uh, there's good years and bad years, but really it's a, dream it's a dream come true for me. You co-invented the Tunch Punch Ladders. How did you come up with that idea? And, you know, how does that work? Well, the person we named it after, I mentioned earlier, his name's Tunch Ilkin. And basically it was just you know, with offensive linemen, you know, you got to have great feet play, to play the game, but you also block and tackle with your hands. And so really it's just another creative way to learn how to play with your hands. And uh, it just brings that awareness to what's going on. And, and really, Sweeney, he played about 16 years in the NFL. He always says that the offensive linemen are truly the only skilled position on the field. And so I, I you know, to me, I couldn't agree more. And obviously I'm very you know, bias about that. But, you know, really everything we do is very unnatural. It's really important that, you know, offensive lineman develops his technical skill of playing football. And so that's kind of, that was our way of help developing the hands and, and making a, an action like pass pro very aggressive. I also see that you started a workout program called 904 Workouts. Um, our gym coaches here actually use it sometimes in class to, you know, give ideas of what we can do. What's it like to be able to do that with your daughter? Well, let me tell you what. So my daughter was, she did all the social media for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay. And so she was on their marketing team. And so that kind of evolved from the COVID year uh, of, you know, we were stuck at home and we wanted everybody to be fit and, and stay fit and not go stir crazy. So that was kind of our contribution. So I, I try to help my daughter out and help the city of Jacksonville out at the same time and just try to give them some creative ways to staying fit and active during the pandemic when everybody was kind of trapped inside early on. And keeping on the family side, your son recently committed to Iowa. What is it like to have your son follow in your footsteps, much like you did with your father? Yeah, you, you know what? I actually, I actually have two sons, and my oldest son is actually in the field of strength and conditioning. He's actually right now finishing up his master's, and he wants to be a strength and conditioning coach, and he hopes to get his Ph.D. And then I have my youngest son, who's very fortunate to um, – oh, actually, my, my – uh, oldest boy actually went to Air Force Academy originally to play football. So, and then my, um, my daughter was a track heptathlete at Jacksonville University. And my, my youngest son is, as you said, going to University of Iowa to be an offensive lineman. And, and so really sports kind of runs, you know, in our family. And, you know, that's, um, you know, my wife was an athlete and she's, she's, her name's Amy Delhunt and she's from Rome, New York as well. So we're a very sporty family. So, you know, my, my one prerequisite in the family is you always had to play a sport. It didn't matter what sport it was, but you always had to be fit and active. And, you know, I always let my kids choose their path. I never wanted to choose their path for them. And, uh, my youngest son is very fortunate to go to, and he's going to be, you know, he's a 2021 20, and, you know, he's really excited. And the university of Iowa is notorious for turning out offensive linemen, and uh, their head football coach is Kirk Ferentz, uh, who, was, who was an offensive line coach. The offensive coordinator used to be an offensive line coach. And, so, and then they have, the, they have an offensive line coach. Who, so now they have three offensive line coaches actually there working with the offensive linemen. So it, it's really um, it, it's a, a great opportunity for him. And I know he's really, really excited to go there. You know, I think he's got a report sometime in June. The last thing I had for you, uh, what are some words of wisdom you have for RFA students and athletes? 
Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is kind of what I echoed earlier is that never give up on your dreams and just keep working. You know, the, uh, you know, we, we were always, you know, kind of, we kind of grew up with the blue collar work ethic. And I think it's really important, you know, um, and you always have to, and you always have to reinvent yourself all the time. And, you know, you got to work hard and it's all about working hard and it's, it's, it's intensely working hard. You know, it's, um, uh, when I talk about the NFL players that really succeed in the NFL, there's two things that they do really well is that they're really in tune to their body and they practice deliberately. That means everything they do is very important to them. So, you know, whatever you do, do it with the utmost importance and, you know, your dreams are going to work out. All right. Well, that's all I've got for you. Thanks for uh, sitting down and answering some questions. And it's great to talk somebody that, to somebody that's found success, you know, from Rome in the NFL. Well, Cody, I, I appreciate you having me. And uh, like I said, it's, uh, uh, my wife and I are both from Rome and, uh, we haven't been back to Rome so much with the COVID back up this year. So thanks for the opportunity and, uh, tell every, give everyone my best, please. Once again, we'd like to thank Tom Meslinski Jr. for coming on the show. It's, it's great to see that hard work truly pays off.